Yo, yo, how's it going? Welcome to the Dog and Pony Show. Rewind. It's not the Dog and Pony Show. It's Friday Night Lights. <laughs> Welcome to Friday Night Lights, presented by the Dog and Pony Show. I am your host, Rhymester. This is episode number two, number dos. I want to thank you for tuning in to episode one. Tonight, we have two special guests. We have C-Mac, a very, actually one of the most energetic performers I have ever seen on stage. I think he's a fitness coach because every time he performs, he gets people to do jumping jacks. And I'm not going to lie, I do jumping jacks with him too. And I think he's a dog whisperer, but he won't admit that to anybody. Guest number two, we have No Montana. She's a very talented music artist. She is the founder of Up Next Magazine, an online publication, which is currently under construction, but it will be up very soon. So any artist you want to get in soon, man, make sure to hit her up at No Montana. We'll have her IG and everything. And I just want to shout out all the guys behind the camera, our director, Scott Anderson. We got John, a.k.a. Impulsive. We got Ben. And we got the homie Keem. Because you can't do anything without a team. T-E-A-M. Team stands for Together. Everyone Achieves More. So while y'all think about that, I'm going to get into one of my guests, and we'll be back on Friday Night Lights. <gasps> Boom. Mm, to fuck with her, it is a luxury. Forget her, then again, I want it now. Ay, ay, it's too hard to focus on what's up with me. I'm thinking about a water almost drowned. We are back at Friday Night Lights, presented by the Dog and Pony yeah. Show. I am your host, Rhymes, here with guest number one, No Montana, looking fresh. How you doing? How you doing, man? Yeah. I'm living life. Give a round of applause. Yeah. Get some snaps. There you go. There you go. Man, I'm doing good. How are you? Pretty good. You know, working with the Dog and Pony Show. Have you seen a pony in the way? Uh, I think I might have. Oh, shit. There it goes right there, right? Oh. oh. There's no. Oh, it's gone My now. Boy. We can, we, can never <laughs> we can never catch the pony. You know what I'm saying? We, all, we always lose the pony, but... Yeah, man, Montana, um, I believe we linked up at Enjoy. You were doing a showcase for, I want to say Beatbox Nexus? Beatbox Entertainment. Shout out Ryan. How hey to Word. sell dope. There you go, yeah. how to sell dope. That was my first show. That's not what you think it's, you know, it's something else. It's not really how to sell dope. But no, she, you had a show and uh, you just did your thing, man. Like, I remember uh, me and C-Mac were there and we were just just vibing and then you know turn turn our heads and we're like oh what the hell's going on and she just had everybody turning up with her it was going in it's me <laughs> you know it's me now that was my first show i was super nervous i, I tried to bring all my friends out got how did they drunk. find you how did they uh how beatbox? did they book you yeah so i actually found beatbox i found ron um had a beatbox shout out ron but um when i had first moved to chicago in like 2018 um i was looking for a professional studio like right off the bat that's what i moved up here for so I literally Google searched like professional recording studios in Chicago, and they were one of the first ones that popped up. So I gave my man Ron a call. He picked up, and it was history, you know. Shout out to Ron. Hey, for sure. Google reviews, companies. Look that it up. Works. You gotta get your you gotta get your uh, your business up there. Yes, sir. So you linked up with them, then they put you on the show, and yeah. then I think the next time I seen you perform was Battle of the Sexes Battle of the at Sexes. Ever Evolved. You actually won. You let you, me take it. Yeah. Look, look. Was, yeah. <laughs> we rigged it a little bit. No, no. Uh, <laughs> we had it at the Auxiliary Arts Center. It was, um, for those who weren't there, it was called Battle of the Sexes. We had a handful of females. We had a handful of males. And it was pretty much crowd decision, like, who rocked it more? And Facts. You pretty much made it 10. I think yeah. two females won at the end. They think yeah, all the dudes exactly. got knocked out. Yep. Yeah, way to, way to represent, yeah. fellas. Way to represent. <laughs> no, shout out to the females, hey, man. They absolutely killed females it. Females are coming up. You know what I'm saying? We were supposed to have a show for you, but then, obviously, the world just <sighs> in chaos. <sighs> Don't worry. We'll get back to Yeah, it. we're going to get back to the show, but... No, you just recently dropped a new video. Is that correct? I, I did. I feel like you were just heavily uh, involved with um, the whole production and the shooting of it. Can you yeah. tell me more about that? I, I like to, like, I don't know. I don't want to be, like, over micromanaged. But as an artist, I feel like it's important to be able to, like, know what direction you want to go to. Um, a lot of videographers have told me, like, oh, it's really lit that you kind of know what, what you want to do, what you're doing. Um, so, yeah, I was hands-on. Uh, I created the whole, like, plot kind of story thing. And then Night Runner, his name's Cameron. He's from... Ohio, so he came all the way down to shoot it for me. Um, uh, yeah, he's just got some good videos, so I was like, I have to shoot with this guy. He came down and shot it for me. We got it done in like an hour, and it's going crazy right now. So yeah, it's a fun time. Yeah, I saw the video, man. Yeah. Great stuff, great Thank stuff. You, you plan on shooting another one anytime soon? Yeah, I, I well, I actually just shot one a few days ago. Um, this guy named Woody, and that's coming out. It's to my song that I'm gonna be, you know, performing tonight. Um, it's not released yet, so I'll be debuting it. The special. Um, <laughs> Bomb drop. Fire. But yeah, it's called Way Too Long. That's my next video, and I'm just going to try to keep back to back in it like I'm Drake. So. There you go. There you go. So let's go back. Uh, You said you, you moved here. Where did you move here from? Yeah. Um, uh, I'm originally from 217. I'm from Champaign, Champaign, Illinois. It's just a little down south. 
campus town. I was sick of it, you know. You were born and raised there? Born and raised, yeah. So you saw all the college stuff going down as a you kid. Know? Yeah, no? I, yeah. I, I, it just wasn't fun to me. Like, I don't know. I was in the bars when I was 19 years old. Like, before I turned 21, I was already drinking myself to sleep. It's just one of those crazy things. So I was like, let me get out of this situation and try to... Did you, my... did you move for music or just because you wanted the lifestyle Literally of Chicago? Just, because of, just because of music? Yes. I was yeah. looking for like a place that took it more serious and I knew Chicago was that place. So. Any plans to go back to Champagne and shut down a bar and just go crazy? Oh, hell yeah. I thought you were saying moving back. I was like, oh, no, man, no, no, no. I might. No, I'm not, not going back there. Not, no okay. way. No way. No, nah, I think that would be really awesome. Uh, there's a place called Canopy Club. It's like one of the only places you could perform down there, I swear. But um, I've been in contact with the guy who runs their... Uh, you know, venues and events. So I think we definitely have something planning. And I, I would love to, like, go back to my hometown and then, like, sell it out. Like, that would be my dream. So as long as it takes to get there, I'm definitely going to do it. Dreams turn into goals. Goals turn into reality. That's what happens. That it's all the about truth. the mindset. Yeah, I swear, Rhymster. So I saw you on Instagram started sharing a lot of, like, look like magazine covers. And I was just like, what's, I'm not confused, but I was like, man, wait, what? I didn't hear about this. What's going on? So sure. it's uh, Up Next. It's an online magazine. You said it's currently under construction, but... What was the idea behind that? Did you already have that idea in Champagne, or did you come to Chicago and just got inspired? Man, look, I came to Chicago with pretty much like an empty slate, um, and the up next thing hit me just like out of the blue come January. I don't know, 2020 is supposed to be the big year, right? So I'm thinking like, you know, I need to step my game up. I haven't been interviewed yet. I haven't like really had much content. You know, I performed at Enjoy and Battle of the Sexes, but that's dead ass it. Like I tell you, that was really it. So I was like, you know what? F it. I'm going to just make my own magazine. I'm going to write myself up and my friends who are clearly, you know, underappreciated. We need to get our names out there. It seriously just started as a little at-home project. I wanted to get more content for myself and my people. And then I, I made it public and I told, you know, everybody on Instagram who's an artist, you know, reach out to me, DM me your songs, your content, your clothing, your pictures, whatever you do. And I'm um, basically, like uh, shining the spotlight on ten artists per month, just trying to you know get them some more credit. So there you go. It's a way to network. Props to you. you no, know, thank you, bro. So I was born and raised in Chicago, and as a person who moves to Chicago, how do you feel about the stigma that Chicago has, where it's like, oh, everybody hates on one another. They're like, what's the thing? Nobody can make it out of Chicago because it's not like unified. And I would say, like, that's man, false. that's 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 some BS. It's Don't get me wrong. It's it's bullish. everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I definitely feel that clicky vibe from some categories. You know, like, music industry is kind of always a small world in a weird way. I've kind of, like, peeped almost, I feel like almost everybody there is that's emerging right now, I kind of, like, got a grasp on who they are, what they're representing. But there's no way that people could say you can't make it out of Chicago, man. That's why I moved here. So it has to be a thing. Like, I see you doing your thing. Yeah, I see people doing their thing, man. So... Yeah, versus like, you know, I've had so many people when I was younger like, oh, you need to go to L.A., New York. But I'm like, I'm not from there. So it's like when I go there, like essentially I'm a stranger. And yes, I can grow into the culture. I can grow into it. But like my roots are based here. So yeah. why would I ditch my roots yeah. to go elsewhere? You know, I was. And that was a big risk for me, like moving to Chicago, knowing that I was going to be like new. Like, you know, I, I don't have that, that solid group of people. I wasn't born and raised here. So I knew I was going to be like I was going to have to be welcomed as a newcomer. Um, but it's been great. People have been awesome, like, especially, you know, my guys at Beatbox, you guys, the Dog and Pony TV show, Friday Night Lights, you know, it's all active, so I've been really appreciative. I mean, appreciate you being here, honestly. Of course. So what are some uh, inspirations from your music? Because uh, when I first heard you, it was, it's almost like you are rapping, but you got like a little, you got a little singing a little in sing there, song, too, a little, little, little you know? singing, you know, it's like rap, it's like yeah. rap singing, it's, it's very melodic, Yeah, you know? I, that's exactly what I'm going for, um. I mean, I could say, like, who my inspirations are. You know, I'm going to say Eminem. That's my uncle. I feel as if, like, in my heart, you know, we're related somehow. But We'll give him a call. Don't worry. Cool. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I got him on a speed dial. But um, I don't know. Other than that, I feel like my sounds really portray, like, um, I don't know. I'm not aiming to be like anybody, but I definitely see myself fitting in that, like, a boogie category. Just melodic, sing song, but yet, like, straight. I'm still trying to provide the bars for the people, you know. So I want to come lyrically correct, but I want to have some catchy for the fans. So I'm trying a little bit of everything. That was a great comparison. I was thinking. Hey, Boogie. Yeah, because he, he does <laughs> he does give you the bars, but then it's going to be some catchy stuff. You know? He just, uh, what did he recently flip? We heard on the radio, uh, 
He took like a Michael Jackson song and he like inspired it. What are you gonna say? He was going yeah, crazy on it. And then he got that lisp and it just makes everything better, bro. I swear. But yeah, I don't know. I really appreciate like him and all he does. So I don't know. I try to follow after these people who who can be catchy yet still present that lyrical material that people are looking for. Do you feel that lyricism has fell off? Especially being a fan of Eminem, yeah. do you feel it's fell off or it's just kind of took a seat in the back row? Took a seat in the back row. I mean, there's still people who are providing that that cold, hard, like, just spitting. But um, I feel like these days, the generation that I grew up in, they're trying to catch, like, the Migos wave. The I don't want to call it mumble rap because I honestly don't want to push them, like, down like that because I feel like, you know... Good music is coming out right now, but lyricism is definitely not prioritized anymore, I don't think. Um, and I, I'm trying to bring a little quite bit unsaid, of both. Quite unsaid, quite unsaid. No, I'm totally kidding. I'm trying to bring a little bit of both. No, no, definitely. And I just, I kind of feel the same way. At first, I was maybe like a little like, uh, but then, like you said, it's catchy. When you when you get turned, it's like, if I'm turned up, I don't want to hear, know? I don't want to hear, I don't want to hear somebody spitting crazy. You so know, crazy. I, I want to just. like really pay attention. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I understand, like, growing up, I'm, I'm 22, so, and I'm freshly 22, so I feel like the generation I grew up in really does, like, they appreciate the lyrics of, like, the old schools and, like, you know, top dogs, but, but it's just easier to catch that wave with the melody and the repetitiveness of the chorus, things like that. So I'm trying to merge the two because I have mad respect for like old school hip hop, all that stuff. Oh, that's great. I admire that you respect the culture which you come from. And I saw an interview, I forgot what old, what new school rapper, and he was like, he didn't really know 90s rappers and they were like trying to clown him a little bit. But at the same time, it's like, well, maybe he wasn't educated or he didn't come up in that. So just because, yeah, you know, he doesn't know about it doesn't mean that he's not skilled or he's like, oh, well, just fuck these dudes and, you know. So, yeah. but some dudes are like, fuck yeah. them dudes, you know, so. Ah, uh, yeah, see, there's a difference. You got to give everybody a chance to grow. If they don't know somebody, you know, you got to educate them or, like, shit. Sometimes I don't know some certain songs or, like, time periods where my boys would be like, nah, you got to sit down and watch this. And I'm appreciative of that. But um, the people who are like, you know, fuck that old school rap, that's dead. That's whack. What do you think of, this? I'm going to paraphrase. I can't really quote it. I forgot which yeah. rapper said it. He said, in the 90s, rappers, the people who were making music, we're drug dealers, but the people who make music now are drug users. Ooh. T. <laughs> I'm not going to drive. Uh, if I drop this mic, I might break it, and then I'll be kicked out. But Don't worry. Don't uh, worry. Yeah. <laughs> he, he throws his mics at metal shows. Like, you trust know. me. You see the dents in the mic. Uh, it's okay. It's all, uh, you know, I can't speak on everybody, man. Everybody has their own way of coming up. I definitely think that drug abuse, unfortunately, is a big thing in the rap community. Um, but hell yeah, some of these people are still slanging that shit and chopping that shit, you know. So some the people who flex, they make it bad for everybody else. But the people who's really doing it, you know, little baby, like rap your truth, bro. You got out of jail and made how much money in a fucking week, like But that's his life. He what do you want him to lie about his life? Like you know what am I gonna rap about, you know? You know? But the people who do lie about it to try to make it that, like, I, I think that's whack. And that's something that when I started rapping, I caught myself doing like I don't know. I don't know if I can say this. I used to sell a little bit, a little bit of weed here and there. I'll and... come out. Marijuana's legal. You're good. <laughs> Not true. You know, you got to you gotta take it. I, I, I thought she was about to be like, yeah, so I sold some hardcore <laughs> shit. <laughs> Cop show up. Woo. No, but um, I don't know. I, I feel like sometimes you got to stretch your truth and make that story like, you know, what it is. But I also have lately been trying to like re rebrand and re-image myself to just be a real peer source. Like, I don't want to fake no funk. Don't fake no funk. Yeah, there you go. Well, at the end of the day, we're all storytellers. We're, to me, a music artist is like an author of a book, except you're using music. You're using, you know, beats Literally. and stuff. Yeah. So Stephen King ain't Literally. out here killing people. I hope not. I, mean, <laughs> I really hope not. You know, James Patterson, you know, you go down the list of just all the great authors and like yeah. they're talking about them, their fantasy world, and maybe they're talking from like a perspective of who, what they see in the world around them right. or who they see. So. Right. Sometimes it's not too far to go, like, in that, just to talk from a perspective, but I respect yeah. that you were like, okay, hold For up. Sure. This ain't fully me. For sure. Let and, me just step and somebody back. somebody who keeps me on track is you. I'm not going to lie. Like, I, <laughs> following you has made me realize, like, there's so much more to this rap culture than just, like, trying to fit that image. Like, you know, you're really representing a culture that's had years and years of history. We have work that we need to keep up and keep doing. So watching you do your thing and, like, spit your shit, talk your shit about, you know, just making sure you're bringing them. The real bars, the real passion, keeps me on track. So yeah, now, I always advise people like, dude, um, 
on last episode, I, I talked with Impulsive about live performance, and I was like, nowadays, it's like nobody's nobody's going to the store to buy your album. Yeah. It's all about, oh, oh I can YouTube, I can go on Apple Music, and that, that's yeah. the new way music is coming out. So it's like, 30 new albums dropped today. I could just add them all right now without I was spending 10, 20 bucks. Back in the day, yeah. you had to save money to go get an album, you know, uh-huh. go to the store, wait in line. So yes. live performance is like, that's where you that's where you really it's shine. It's everything. I've seen people on Instagram with like, oh, I got 30,000 followers. I got 40,000. And then we see them live in person perform. They're awkward. They're frozen. They're up. awkward, lip syncing, rapping over, like, don't even, this is not, I'm just like mind blown because I'm like, how do you have 30,000 followers, but then when you show up to a show, you only got 10 people showing up, <laughs> and then you, you perform Ugh. like it's a talent show, yeah. you know, <laughs> holding the mic like this. I hope I get yeah, like, oh. you know what I'm saying? Like, you would think that yeah. the image that you keep online is like, oh, that's got to be them in real life, and then, like, I learned that over the years in Chicago, like, certain people that, I because I used to follow blogs religiously when I was really oh, yeah. training as an MC, so I was like, oh, yeah. who's this dude? Who's that dude? Damn, they're doing their thing right now, damn, and then... You know, I get to where I'm at, and I'm some some of these guys are asking me to be on the show, and I'm like, wait yeah, a second, it's like I was that, just studying man. you five years ago, and it's you like were that. like in the fader, you're on complex, but now you're in the same bar as me, asking me to get on a show. Like, and I feel that people in Chicago, I'll give you one thing with Chicago, they think just because they made it in Chicago, it, it, they're on, they're completely on. I've kind of caught that vibe. I'm not gonna lie. See what I'm and, I, I very highly like. I can go to the California, be like, so who's this? But don't don't look them up. Who is this? I don't know who is that. They'll probably say somebody from their neighborhood. You know? Oh, they got the same name. <laughs> they got the same rap name. You know? Yeah. I, and that's what I, when I first said, you know, Chicago has that clicky vibe. That's exactly what I'm talking about. I feel like if people have that image, that social media image, they don't even have to really have the talent. They just caught their fans like, this day and age, bro, people are just looking for something that's aesthetically pleasing, something that everybody else is bandwagoning. So, I mean, I don't know. I I gotta give everybody a chance to grow. Like, oh, of course, you know, of course. If if people go to a show and they kind of freeze up, like my first time, I thought I was gonna choke. You know, like like eight miles. So, Mom's everybody, spaghetti. you know, everybody has Mom's time. lasagna. But um, yeah, you definitely gotta get your shit together. If you got thirty k on Instagram, go like, make like a show. Like flex it on Instagram. Like you better, flex it. Yeah, you know, you better. Like, you better know pull what you're up doing. right. You better pull up ready to go. <laughs> I better see a hundred people walk through that door. Yeah. And just be like, oh, we here for gang, and then we go crazy. Better be, you know. So. And we're all working towards it, I guess. No, no, but all about growth, you know. But I've probably been doing this for like I started rap when I was like seventeen, eighteen, and I'm twenty seven now. Damn. Yeah, but I didn't start the. Damn. Damn. I didn't know oh, you was that. Oh. Oh. No, so it wasn't until I was probably like twenty three, around your age, twenty two, twenty three, that I started being like, okay, you know what? I need to be more than an artist. I need to be like something for the people that like when they look at me, it's yep. like. Oh, like, oh, yeah. he's just a rapper. He's just this. And then, like, you know, everybody never evolved has that where yep. this guy does, like, five different things. They do something over here. They do something over there. And we give back to the community. We always give back yes. to artists. It's always yes. about the give back. So yes. I realized that moving up here, too. Like, Chicago has completely changed my mindset. I really, like, I don't want to call myself selfish, but I just had the wrong ideas of what being, like, a rapper looked like before I moved up here. And I see now, like... If you can't benefit or give back to your community, your loved ones, your family, if you're not doing something bigger than just getting on stage and trying to get that show money and that clout, like, there's no point in you doing it, you know? Getting on stage is the fun part to me. It's like, dude, you got everything before that, the process of writing lyrics, the beats, the writer's block, the the self-doubt, the self-doubt you have, but then the next day you're confident as hell. You know, you're (laughs) like, man, I was tweaking yesterday. Look, man, I'm going to shake it off, you know? I swear. (laughs) So, but that's 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 the life of an artist, and I feel that if an artist, I always tell artists, it's all about you. If you don't like your own music, how is anybody else gonna like your music? How the hell they're gonna feel if that? If you don't love yourself, how the hell you expect somebody else to love you? Eh? You get an amen. That's what RuPaul says. I'm gonna educate you on some RuPaul. Working. <laughs> hey, they don't know nothing about it. Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. So, have you? You might have had this yet. Maybe you haven't. Have you had any groupie stories? Crazy little, little, little things that just hit you up because of music. They don't even know your, they don't even know your real name. They just know you by your stage name, your artist name. I, I'm gonna be completely real, not yet, but I have had some crazy, some, some crazy like love interest stories. I wouldn't even call it love, man. Because of your music, or just because of your <laughs> music, character? Look, <laughs> yeah, look, it's getting real now. <laughs> nah, man. Actually, when I moved to Chicago, I've been. Uh, 
I've been with this girl for like two years now, but when I met her, I know she's not going to care if I tell the story, but I... Please don't care. Look, look, no, that's not there. But I had my first threesome ever. I took her straight out the threesome. You know what it is? So... Thank you. There we go. But ever since then, man, that's been my lady. So I, I, I would love, you know, the fans and stuff, but unfortunately... um close off for like the groupies <laughs> let me find out y'all a tag moment. team going At around town just going we crazy might, bro. she said we might maybe you got a, you got a girlfriend no nah, I'm, <laughs> I'm joking hey fellas hide your hide your girlfriends hide, hide your, your kids, wives hide your wife. All that. not the kids <laughs> scotty's calling his right now <laughs> do not come over here right now no so i know 2020 is kind of canceled you know oh, we can't don't really say that not canceled but like with social life, can't really, you know, yeah. just you know the way the way it used to be. It's crazy because it's almost like we did it to ourselves. Like we talked twenty twenty up to be this the biggest year. I'm planning in twenty fucking fifteen. Twenty twenty is about to be nuts, you know. Like I already had it planned out, and then here it is, and it's the absolute fucking worst. Like it could have got it. <laughs> so it's been a fucking wild ride this year for sure. What I've been telling people is like twenty twenty is the year to build your content. Uh, learn a new skill, expand on an existing skill. That's right. Read, experiment. You want to be in the music industry? Learn everything you can about it. Read about contracts. Read about publishing. Read yeah. about ASCAP, all that. Like, yeah. just go in it. If you don't know it, ask somebody. And if they don't want to share that knowledge, then that's on them. There's plenty of other people who know that knowledge is power and is key to travel from this person to you, to here, to there, to there. So, Facts. that's what we all do with the Dog and Pony Show. That's it's all, all about, can, you know. Right? And I know I've been sitting on my ass for the past three months, so I got no excuse. Time to get off, no excuse, time you know? to get off it's That time, man. All right, so let's say, fingers crossed, everything. 2020, we, we get through this. You know, people are treated better. People are treated equally. The sickness is, you know, gone, whatever. What's 2021 looking like? 2021 is looking like a fucking wonderland. And I feel like everybody, if we just stick together, unite, really just bring that passion, especially to the music industry, and they open up the venues again, and they open up, like, concerts again, like, I feel like it will really be great. I, I don't know. Everybody's going to be put to the test. Like, what have you been doing while you've been at home? And it's the time to shine. So I actually had a tour planned, like, in a few fucking weeks, but it got canceled because Texas and California just got spiked way up again for the for the corona so my corona. tour got canceled but other than that man I, I plan on just back to back things the whole way through 2021 that's what i'm here for there you go so before we get in your performance what two songs are you gonna give us so i'm debuting some shit tonight i feel like you know this is definitely a special enough night to do so um one's called way too long it's really just about like being hungry and motivated to to get up and out there you know, nobody wants to grind for so long and not see an outcome. And then um, the other song is called Down. I do sample Playboy, or sorry, not Playboy. You got me thinking about these bitches. <laughs> Look, I sample Fall Out Boy. Fall Out Boy, if you ever tune into this, don't sue. I'll pay you whatever you need. I just don't know what that looks like yet. I took one of your courses, but it's just something slight. So I'm sampling that tonight, too. Hopefully you guys like it. Um, but it's two new songs, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, get can, groovy. You favor? can you hold this real quick? We'll be back on Friday Night Lights we'll with back. No Montana as she performs. Woo! Woo! Nightly, eyes faded, going blind. 
In my new two-seater, I'll be flying I'll be fine Wake up in the morning every time Putting in this work, Lord knows I'm trying They keep trying to try me Mama told me let them try Taking up what they won't ever find Ay, Clowning I hear all the checks been getting bounced They checking on me, but I override, I won't allow I pull up on her every month just for allowance Just for allowance Oh, a drop when I'm in a drop, oh yeah And she give me top when I'm at that top floor uh, Plot, yeah, they tryna rob But they know that they not going, boy, they not uh, Five, six, shorty small But she getting all that attention She gon' ride the way just for the mention Never let me sit down for the sentence Shorty blessing Going down, down in an earlier round Sugar, we're going down I'll be your number one with the bullet Loaded glock, loaded, loaded glock, pull it out I became a leader of two pines Throwing back the whiskey in no time And I've been smoking nightly Eyes faded, going bright In my new two-seater, I'll be flying I'll be fine Wake up in the morning every time Putting in this work, Lord knows I'm trying They keep trying to try me Mama told me let them try Digging up what they won't ever find You yeah. <laughs> heard? little song song <laughs> Thank you, bro. Thank you. Go ahead, man. Hey, bro. You taste kind of good. Shit. <laughs> ah. Fill it with dust. If they don't see you for your best, then they won't see nothing. Big shots acting greedy. Press costs on needy. Paying it off forever. It's been a good run. It's been a good run. It's been a good run. So we gon' make it out, just keep waking up. I've been grinding up for way too long to come up short. 
I promise I'm not going Been riding out way too strong To come back with nothing I got empty and Been grinding out for way too long To come up short I promise I'm not No Montana, Hannah. You know what it is. Instagram, Spotify, Apple Music is No Montana. Check me out. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Hey.